Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And seeing the long-term impacts of climate change, Looking at Expo Med and also the immersive factory in Rome of Italy, we're talking about the rejuvenation and the management of the seas, the oceans, the seas, actually all water bodies, because water is life and water gives life. And so we have to protect it in ways we never even thought about it for the last thousands of years. As humankind, we've been using the oceans, the seas, uh, and all the tributaries. We have someone that's going to be talking about the robots that are now being used, taking ancient technologies of Rome and bringing it fast forward into the 21st century. This is Cecilia Dinono. She is a biologist of the Expo Med and also the head of business development for the Mercy Factory. Uh, Cecilia, welcome back to the Emerald Planet TV. Hello, Samuel. Thank you. Looking at robots, why are robots so important in today's world as far as understanding the oceans, the seas, any type of water bodies? And yet, how can these lead to better understanding, but also better management, harvesting, and to protect these various water bodies? Well, Samuel, this uh, image we are looking at, it's about a very interesting and brand new project. Uh, robots, um, robot fish, but also other shape of underwater robots are very, very important because so far uh, since today, we could, uh, we, we were able to build just um, cameras and sensors um, cable guided from the outside of the water. So we had to uh, guide them underwater to see and to go where we wanted to go. But with this new uh, robot project, we are able to have a device that is completely independent that can go under the water and then can also reach areas which are very difficult to reach uh, with a cable and uh, guided from the outside. So it's a completely brand new project. Uh, we are investing a lot of um, uh, funds on, but it is very, very important. Yeah, and I think for the future, this is really critical. Uh, looking at the Expo Med and blending that with the Immersive Factory, what are we looking at here and why is this so important, uh, not only for humans to understand what we're seeing and what they're experiencing, but also to expand knowledge, expand understanding, and expand the technologies that we need to improve for a planet that's going to 12 to 13 billion people by the end of this century. Uh, what are we looking at uh, at the moment are some jellyfish shaped robots. Yeah. And uh, these are very interesting. So far, we developed it, uh, three types, uh, three different shapes of uh, underwater robots. Uh, one are a jellyfish shape, and then we have a common fish uh, shape uh, robot, and then we have an eel shape. So it's more like a snake um, robot uh, shape of, of um, 
uh, underwater um, uh, fish or devices, we can say. And uh, it is very important because with these three types of, sh uh, of shapes, we can reach different areas and especially we study the movements of the of these robots inside the water so we decided specifically these th three different shapes because we are testing them inside the tanks to see also how to balance them inside the real water which is where they're going to go in the future so this is why it's very important yeah looking at the uh, the shapes as far as the robots and then looking at the actual fish uh, that's uh, used as the model for this. So as close as possible, you're trying to use the, the shapes that are natural in the environment to these new robots. Why are you doing that? Okay, this is a very important question as well. Uh, since the beginning, because we wanted to test uh, these robots with real animals, we wanted also to uh, create a cover which blends them uh, perfectly inside the natural environment. And this is useful because uh, we believe that um, the real uh, living creatures will be less disturbed by these robots if they're blended and if they have you know, the, uh, the shapes, if they look like a real fish so we don't want to disturb them we don't want to stress them we don't want to create any sort of um uh, uncomfortness for these animals so this is why we decided to uh, create also the skin of the of the robot fish not only the electrical uh part but uh, also because I think it will be very useful in the future when we will be able to use them in the marine environment, in the water, to have them blended. I think it, it's going to be even more important because uh, we can have, you know, cameras or sensors that no one else knows that are robotic. So we might also, you know, a sort of spy our marine reserves, what happens, and without uh, no one knowing that are robots instead of real fishes. Yeah, it's just absolutely amazing when you look at the, what you've actually created uh, based on the images of nature. So I'm going to actually rotate this. And, and again, why do you think this is so important that we have this, uh, this complexity as far as these robots? But yet, if you look at them, in reality, they're quite simple. Absolutely, yes. This is a very an incredible, uh, difficult project. We developed this uh, project with the biomedical campus that we have here, here in Rome, which is a huge uh, research uh, center and university. And for them, it was very, very important to study perfectly the movements of the animals coming from um, real animals. So for the biomedical campus, it was more a project about recreating exactly the, the, mu the movements uh, from animals and from the environments in the way that they can uh, better uh, fit them uh, with, um, for their robot devices uh, that, they're going, that they're building and that they continue to build. And specifically related to the fishes, what was important for them to study was the dynamic of the uh, robot inside a fluid envi environment, so inside water. For them, it was very, very important because whatever they create, they can also create it very, very little. And, it be, and it's very important for them because they use it for uh, medical, um, for medical um, goals such as uh, using robots inside our veins or inside our, you know, fluids, in, uh, inside the fluids of our body. So it was a very, very important project for them to develop. This is really uh, just amazing. We're going to have several minutes of this video of these uh, various types of uh, robots. Uh, but looking at it, why have the actual background of what you would see in the ocean. You could just have these robots just suspended in water, but yet you try to make it as, as real as possible. 
Why is that? Absolutely, yes. As I said, because it was very important for the engineers that built the robot fishes to uh, study, perfectly study the movements coming from the from real nature. So from real fishes, it was very important for them because they can recreate it in any sort of robotic device they built also for humans. So if we imagine, for example, external robotic skeletons that might help our move our movements for people with diseases or for people that needs this kind of robotic support it's very important for them to study uh, movements coming from real life and the environment and what is actually um, what we can notice from this video is that the the, the fishes are completely independent so they have sensors that allows them to do not crash with the glass of the the water tank and that can you know the it makes them turn around go up on da or down uh to avoid obstacles and uh, this sort of situation now looking at this uh people that are visiting this uh, they have an opportunity both above ground and underground to be able to observe this. So how do you think this really serves as an, almost as an interactive educational tool for school children, for their teachers, and for the parents of these children to have a better understanding of the seas and the beings in the seas? Why is this so important as we move through this climate change phenomena of the 21st century absolutely yes well first of all this uh, sort of um, device uh, robots in general are very interesting for uh, students who would like in the future to become engineers to build you know to uh, learn more about the robotic fields so it's a brand new area uh, very important for our future and uh, that attracts a lot of uh, high school students that in the future maybe would like to uh, decide to study or continue their studying in robotics and uh, engineer. And for our real life, day after day real life, uh, these robots, as I said before, are very, very important because they can enter inside very difficult and confined space that we have underwater. So they could be very useful once they are going to be released in the real environment to study and to censor and to um, do help um, scientists with their research uh, uh, related on the underwater environment. Yeah, I think this is absolutely fantastic. And looking at the assembly and the complexity of these, they're so small, but yet so complex at the, uh, the same time. Uh, looking at uh, the interaction of humans and robots, we're going to leave this image. We have about 30 seconds. Why is it so important that the school children, the teachers, the parents see this interaction of your scientists, your researchers, your technicians with the fish? Absolutely, yes, because the water environment, it's really, really um, an incredible environment to study. And it's important because um, today still we have uh, difficulties in communicating underwater. So that's a brand new scientific research area as well. The communication from the outside and the um, underwater environment so also wi-fi you know technology that goes underwater mm -hmm. that's a brand new thing and this is something that we are studying also with this uh, robot fishes inside the tanks because what we want to do from the outside actually is communicate for uh, with them inside the water inside the tank so this is an extraordinary new field we are working on and it I, I really believe it will be very very interesting also for the visitors of the aquarium and for people that would like to learn more about this this is Cecilia Donono this is Cecilia Donono thank you for being with us as we create the emerald planet